Well, hello again, everyone. Uh, thank you, as always, for watching. And uh, now that we've covered sort of, um, you know, the basics of geometry, uh, as well as, you know, uh, how to handle polygon questions, we're going to move into something slightly different, um, which is really just going to be the study of uh, ratios and rates. Um, now, uh, a ratio, first of all, um, is really just how much of something there is relative to something else. Uh, you might see it written in a number of ways. Um, oftentimes, it'll simply be written as um, A to B, like this, using a colon, or uh, they might actually write out uh, the ratio of A to B, where, of course, A and B are really just, uh, you know, we need two numbers. Um, or, um, perhaps most commonly, um, perhaps following the colon method, I would be just to write it as a fraction, A over B. Because it's uh, important to remember that really a ratio is nothing more than a fraction, uh, something set relative to something else. Now, uh, a ratio can always be found whenever you're given two values of something. So say you know that a basket of fruit has, uh, you know, 10 apples, right, um, and 15 oranges. Um, very quickly, we can just say that the ratio of apples to oranges would then be 10 over 15, um, or if we reduce that fraction, of course, uh, 2 to 3, right? Now, uh, using some similar logic, uh, we should also know that um, whenever you are given a ratio, let's say our ratio here is uh, 4 to 5 and 1 value, um, so let's say if we're going to use the same example, right, apples to oranges, let's say we know that our ratio of apples to oranges is 4 to 5 and that uh, we have 20 oranges, right? Okay. Um, we can very quickly figure out by doing what is called uh, setting up a proportion just how many of the one thing there is, right? So if we know that our ratio of apples to oranges is 4 to 5, right? We know that needs to equal um, our apples, which we'll represent with an x, over our oranges, which we know is 20. So now we're going to do what's called cross-multiplying, right? Where you just multiply uh, one denominator by the other numerator, uh, vice versa. So we know then that 5x um, is going to equal 80, right? Um, and then we divide by 5, divide by 5, and we know that in this case, then, our x is going to equal 16, which means that if we have uh, in a ratio of 4 to 5 apples to oranges, if we have 20 oranges, we are going to have 16 apples. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a quick practice problem. Um, as you can see there, uh, in the bottom of your screen, our question reads, uh, in a choir, the ratio of tenors to sopranos is 4 to 7. If there are 12 tenors, how many sopranos are there in the choir? Okay. So if we know that our ratio of tenors, tenors to sopranos is 4 to 7, right? Uh, and we know that there are 12 tenors, right? So we know that when we set up our proportion, we're going to put our tenors on the top, and we're going to put our x, which is what we're solving for, on the bottom, right? Um, so very simply, you just cross-multiply once again, and you're going to get uh, 4x equals 12 times 7, right? So then uh, 4x uh, will equal, if I can do some very rapid mental math, uh, 84, right? Okay, so then we divide by 4, divide by 4, and we know that we are going to have then, um, given, given this ratio, if there are 12 tenors, we're going to have 21 sopranos, right? It's not so difficult. Everybody got it? Okie dokie. Okay, so moving back to our general discussion of uh, ratio rules, a uh, quick important thing to, to, to cover is that if you're just given a simple ratio, so remember we had our, say, our ratio of uh, apples to oranges, 4 to 5, right? We can't figure anything out about the number of apples and oranges in this basket except some possibilities, right? So just given a simple ratio, you can't find any values, right? We can only find potential values. So it's quite possible that there are 4 apples and 5 oranges, or that there are 8 apples and 10 oranges, or that there are 12 apples and 15 oranges, right? Um, but there is no, no possible way we can find any definite value given only a ratio. All right, so let's take a quick look at uh, how we might go about combining ratios, right? So that's when you're finding a ratio between three things instead of two things from the ratio between two different things. So let's say we're trying to find the ratio of x to y to z, right? Okay, and we know that our ratio of x to y is 1 to 2, right? And that our ratio of y to z, excuse me, y to z is uh, 3 to 4. Right. So basically, to do this, we're going to uh, we're gonna have, basically going to do what you do when you uh, combine fractions. Right. You're going to need to find a common term 
between our y's because our y's are what we share. So in a sense we're going to be finding a common term between uh, the denominator of one fraction and the numerator of the other. Uh, let me show, let me demonstrate more fully what I mean. So if we have uh, 1 over 2 uh, as one of our ratios and 3 over 4 as the other, we need this 2 and this 3 to match up because we know right that those both represent our y's. So if we can find common y's, we can then find the ratio of x to z or the ratio of x to y to z, right? So the least common denominator between 2 and 3 is, of course, 6. So we can then change these fractions into uh, 3 over 6, right, by multiplying it by 3 over 3. Um, and uh, our latter will become then, of course, 6 over 8, right? So then we can find our ratio of x to z with our common y of 6 as being uh, 3 to 8, right? So x to z um, equals 3 to 8, right? So if we're looking ultimately for our ratio of x to y, to z, we know then that that uh, three-part ratio is going to be 3 to 6 to 8. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, practice problem at the bottom of the screen right there. Um, after spending 5 eighths of the money in her bank account, Sandra has $75 left. How much money did she have in her bank account before she started spending? So now, uh, basically, we're just going to set a proportion, just like we did a minute ago, right? Um, there is a little trick in this question, though, right? So we know that she has $75 left in her bank account and that she spent 5 eighths of the original money in it, right? So a uh, quick thing you need to catch here is that the proportion we're going to be setting up is ultimately going to be using 3 eighths, because that is the amount of money left in her bank account, right? So if 3 eighths of her original amount equals 75 over her original total, which will be x, of course, right? Uh, we're then going to be able to cross multiply again, of course, right? And we're going to come out with 3x equals $600, right? Okay? So if uh, 3x equals 600, we just divide both sides by 3, divide both sides by 3, and very logically, we're going to find out that our x is equal to 200. So Sandra had $200 in her bank account to begin with. All right, so those are uh, ratios. Okay, and now that we've covered ratios, uh, we can move into rates, which are really nothing more than ratios with a denominator of time. Right, so instead of finding the ratio of, say, apples to oranges, we'll be finding the rate of, uh, you know, miles per hour, whatever it may be, right? Okay, so go ahead and take a look at that question at the bottom of your screen. Uh, printer can print 5,040 pages in one hour. At this rate, how many minutes will it take this printer to produce 756 pages? Uh, now, there is something, again, here you need to catch, right? And that is that we are working with uh, different ratios here, right? Different uh, units of time, right? So if we know that we produce 5,040 pages in an hour, our temptation might be to write our ratio as 5,040 to 1, right? But when we set up our proportion, it's going to be relative to a number of minutes, right? What we're ultimately looking for is a number of minutes. So rather than write it that way, we're going to write, want to write uh, our proportion relative to minutes. So we know how many minutes are in an hour, of course, 60, right? So we can then create our proportion as 5,040 over 60, right? Equals uh, the number of pages that we're looking for, of course, which in this case is going to be 756, right? Um, over x, yeah? So, uh, again, all we need to do is then cross multiply, right? So these are going to be big numbers, so you're just going to want to plug them into your calculator. So you're going to have uh, 5,040x equals a nice big number, actually, which is going to be uh, 4,500, or excuse me, 45,360, right? Um, so, again, this is why you're allowed to use your calculator on the SAT, right? Because these would be very bulky numbers to deal with. And what they're testing, again, is not your ability to do this, uh, you know, difficult computation, but your ability to understand what they're asking, right? So uh, in a real-life scenario, you would obviously, generally speaking, have a calculator around. Um, and the, the bigger issue is knowing how to do what you need to do, right? So again, uh, as we learned in our equations video, just divide there by 5,040, divide by 5,040. Um, and what we're going to find out then is that x is going to equal 9 minutes. So if it takes... Uh, if in 60 minutes a printer can print 5,040 pages, it's going to take it exactly 9 minutes at that rate, right, to, uh, to print 756 pages. Okay, so moving on, uh, let's take another look at, or let's take a look at a, a very common type of rate problem, which is a, uh, involves someone, uh, you know, covering a certain amount of distance um, in a certain period of time, but going in different speed for different parts of the journey. So if you look at the part, bottom of your page there, you'll see, uh, you'll see our question, which is that uh, Carl is driving 40 miles from Andersonville to Simpletown. 
Uh, if he drives the first 15 miles at 30 miles per hour and the next 25 miles at 48 miles an hour, how many minutes will the drive take? So again, we're presented with the problem of uh, being given uh, information in, in terms of hours, right, when we're really being asked for something in terms of minutes. So all we really need to do is convert that very quickly, which isn't extraordinarily difficult, right? So if we know that he's uh, that 30 miles per hour, right, if someone is going 30 miles per hour, right, all that we need to do to figure out how many miles per minute that is, right, is put it over the number of minutes in an hour, which is 60, right? So 30 over 60 miles per minute, right? Which is, of course, then just going to reduce to uh, one half a mile per minute, right? Okay? Mile per minute. Yeah? Okay. And our second value, then, is going to be um, 48 miles per hour, right? Okay? So 48 miles per hour, then, is just going to equal uh, 48 over 60 miles per minute, right? Okay? Which is then just going to equal for us, uh, totally going to reduce down to four-fifths of a mile per minute, right? So now, very simply, we're just going to figure. We're just going to take this information we've just uh, created for ourselves, our uh, mile per minute ratios, right? Uh, and we're going to apply them to information we're given, right? So if we knew that Carl drives for 15 miles uh, at half a mile per minute, all we need to do then um, is multiply that uh, 15 ultimately by two, right? Because we know that he needs to go 15 miles, so one half. X equals 15, right? So we're just going to have to multiply both sides of this equation by 2 to find our X, right? Okay, so then our X in this case is going to equal 30. And of course, this X represents a number of minutes. So it takes him 30 minutes to go that first, um, <coughs> excuse me, to go that, that first 15 miles. And then the second 25 miles, right? We're just going to do exactly the same thing, right? So 4 fifths X equals 25, right? So multiply both sides by 5 fourths. Multiply this side as well by 5 fourths. And again, we're going to be able to use our calculators here. This is a very simple calculation. What we're ultimately going to come out with is that x equals 38.4 minutes. Now, um, we found separately, which is how you have to do it, we found separately um, the time it takes for the two legs of our drive, right? One leg took 30 minutes and one leg took 38.4 minutes. So uh, the question, of course, asks how long did the drive take him, referring to the whole drive. So all I really need to do is add that 30 and that 38.4. I want to come out with ultimately 68.4 minutes, right? Okie dokie. Well, uh, thanks as always for watching, and uh, we're ready for our next video, which is going to be averages and percents.